Imiwa na baba Imiwa na baba Mdona lile hiru Imawana Sana wenyu Mjiti wowe sane osha Maria jine Imiwa na baba Imiwa na baba in discuss uh, issue of uh, death of the soul of hell it is critical for us to say uh, that all ancient tomes of religious writing originating with those of our ancestors in ancient egypt based on the hieroglyphic uh, alphabet the grave what we call the grave has dual meanings it is the grave of amenta which is our physical body of flesh and blood and also the grave inside amenta which is the original tomb or womb in which we came from and also in which we deposit the flesh and blood that the soul used so you see the word womb english word womb for the body in which the soul was awaiting the body to be released by the manufacturer of the car of the horse to use is the same as tomb in which we will put that car that body that carcass we call it carcass carcass when the soul leaves it so what shall we mourn what shall we be in pain for shall we mourn for the carcass or we mourn for the goodness and the sweetness of the soul that has left us, that has left us in this dreary and this mad and dark and hellish place called the Amenta. Yes, when we mourn, we should mourn for the latter, not for the former. Good day, uh, beloved brothers and sisters, honorable souls living in Amenta today. I want to thank you. For taking your choices and all selecting us and also listening to us in this world that is full and filled with choices today i want to come to you as ptr a priest teacher rabbi of kem's spirit of amen hamiti hiburu ethics spirit of amen i want to address the issue of uh, death how we deal with the issue of death in which we need to understand the matters of soul hell paradise and also to look at it from a very rich bantu tradition which has been codified by our ancestors uh, first the thing that we have to look at is to understand the word amenta because once we understand the word amenta we will be able to understand the Bantu term marinda, uh, in which the word rinda will mean to wait and uh, to guard and uh, to protect and to deliver. We also have another term tuna, which is very important in this understanding. So when we look at the word amenta, we actually find the word amen and also the word ta. The word amen. We know that it means uh, hidden, secret, or nameless, which is also part of our uh, mandatory understanding that the creator or the creator in our purview of the typology of studies is something or someone that we can never have a name, or name for. And we also have the word ta which is the word that means land or earth. So Amenta means the hidden earth. Therefore, when we study the book of coming forth by day, now named the book of, De of the dead, we realize that the scholars are lost and completely divided and uh, battle in terms of finding the definition for Amenta. And uh, we want to take a position here that the, since the word Amenta is related to our word Rinda, and rinda is related to earth or soil it also means that the amenta could invariably mean earth this is a revolutionary observation once we adopt that scholars are lost in searching what amenta is 
they have given us various names like subterranean, netherworld, and all sorts of uh, zonal time, space, or intra or interspace with uh, Zepitepi coming in, or singularity and one singularity issues rising up. But we have said first and foremost, you will understand and will adopt the term that Amenta means Earth, flat Earth where we are. Now we look at the word death, and the word death has its original meaning now lost in a religiosity and spirituality. Due to its continuous redefinition, we find that the term death has actually uh, become something synonymous with pain, sorrow, crying, weeping, and also suffering. We know that for us to understand the meaning of death, we have to redefine what is man. Man, not male, but man, human beings. What is a human being? This is simple because we now go back to our original Bantu lesson where we realize that uh, the term Bantu is a cognate of two words. Ba, which is soul, and in two, which is body. So, what is a human being? A human being is a Bantu. It is a soul body. He is a vehicle of the soul. It is someone who is riding the soul. It is someone who is riding the animal being. So man is both divine and animal. The divine is what we call the soul. And there are so many aspects of the soul, numbering perhaps to nine souls, which are the levels at which the soul descended from on high, from higher dimensions as they come down and at the least uh, and the lowest level is this material or matter in which the body itself is an animal body. This body that we have, this flesh and blood that we have is the, an animal. It's not, it's not the human, it's an animal. The human or, or, or the Bantu includes that soul and the quality of that Bantu comes from the Bantu philosophy of Ubuntu, which we will deal with uh, in lessons to come. So, our ancestors had an oral tradition that was, re, that was revealed to them. And our ancestors grouped or took that oral uh, uh, belief, uh, oral teaching and oral philosophy and they captured it in books which they wrote using hieroglyphics which is a Bantu symbological language which uses symbols and animals only found in Africa and mostly in Southern Africa. The monkeys, the baboons, uh, the lions, the elephants, the hills, and all those animals that you find now uh, having been Latinized in the alphabet that we have are uh, all found in Africa. And now, having realized that our ancestors left these books, it is critical for me to interject here and say that those who fail to study the books of our ancestors or those who dismiss the books of our ancestors and they rely on translated books like the Bible, the Quran, the New Testament, uh, the Gita, and many others, are losing the plot and they are missing the foundation because the foundation is the ancient hieroglyphic language which we are fortunate today that we are living in an age and an era where a simple and a correct understanding can be derived from uh, the interpretations that have come uh, about. So, as we continue to look at this issue of death, we find that a lot of us are very pained when someone dies. But let us realize that death is actually a separation. It is not the end. It is actually the beginning. And when we say death, we must be sure that we are speaking of the soul. And the soul is indestructible. It cannot be destroyed. And the soul descended from a higher levels to lower levels and it rides on top of the human body which is the animal which is you. So when you go to uh, hieroglyphics you find that the soul is pictured with hands raised up forming a square. And uh, the English word shoulders which is a, a, a tricky word is identified as the place of the soul. So the soul stays or the soul rides on you, on, is on your shoulders. When you hold two shoulders, that's where the soul is sitting. Its top is just above your hair level. And its tail 
follows your spinal cord down right between the two mountains right between your two legs and it descend a little bit deeper into the ground into the earth that therefore that's why you are said you are grounded or you are earthed in other words your soul energy is connected to the earth and to the ground that's your soul i said the word shoulders if you remove that word h from the word shoulders you will find that and put it in front you find that it is soul holders soul holders in a bantu in our bantu language soul holders we call them mafudzi in that is in shona a zimbabwe name mafudzi mafudzi there is the word fudzi fudza it means shepherd or guide so when you say mafudzi you are meaning your shoulders you are meaning the soul who is uh, sitting on your shoulders guiding you riding you so who is a man the man is the sum total of that which is riding him in that external position that i have given as well as the flesh and blood which is riding just imagine a person riding a horse and when we say the soul we are meaning the horse rider as well as the horse but what we are concerned with today is that a lot of us are shedding tears suffering and in pain because the horse has died but the rider is still alive that's that's, that's the example that i want to live with you now we want to continue here and say that uh, the problem about this understanding comes from the presumption that uh, this life is of minor consequence and that it has value only as the stepping stone to another where true being is alone achieved this is a fallacy this is a mistake this is an error this is one of those facets of enormous fatuity that has been given to us by orthodox indoctrination whether it comes through the african traditions books christianity or islam it is the last point of carriage of primary truth in the scriptures and that its meaning and application have been diverted from uh, what it actually is intended for for the books are intended to instruct us and to project us not as a code for when we are dead you see religion has misled us the, in terms of understanding and interpreting the term the dead we have even come to a point where we weep we mourn for the dead we mourning for the horse and it's a true meaning which is bound on a mentor so the dead are depicted in our ancient understanding and ancient teachings is dwelling in a mentor is dwelling on earth so who are the dead the dead applies to the soul when it decides to become born as a baby and a human being that's when it is said it is dead when the living are walking they are called the living dead anyone who is walking on earth today is known as the living a dead you are dead because your soul is dead you have to activate that soul in terms of knowledge and understanding so that it can you can rise up from being dead the gentiles are dead people that's what we are saying here so we know that the uh, we know that amenda is earth the bantu is, uh, is the body and the dead we know that it applies in two scenarios applies the most primary scenario is when the soul comes on earth when you are receiving that baby who is being born the soul is dying and when she when they have their first breath and they combine your body with energy and become activated and become a living soul they are dead the soul is dead that's dead you are not living when you say you are living you are lying you are thinking you are living but it's not that's not life therefore you find that the scholars many scholars that have studied egypt, ancient egypt and the uh, and the gospels they think that the nether earth was the other half of of of, of the of the reality they think that the gospel history has been based upon the earth and that everything is 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 founded in some other realm that's where they say hell hell is the earth she was the earth amenta is the earth not under the earth not anywhere this life we are living is hell this is hell we are in hell the soul has come to hell and it will descend and come out of hell when you die 
the spirit world can in no way be localized as under our earth or under our world. His second, his second coming or whatever you have heard about that, it means that the souls that live are living in the true location called Amenta, which is this earth. Uh, scholars have looked at this and they have come to the point where they uh, have almost misunderstood everything. And they have made a mistake uh, in common with general religious opinions on these matters, affirming that after the termination of life in the body, the soul first descends into a mentor. The soul is already in a mentor. It cannot descend into a mentor. And that it later rises up into paradise. That's not correct. This flies in the face of all basic postulation of theology itself. The soul descends in coming to earth and there is no lower left in any region for it to go. It further ascends up on quitting the body, just like the horse rider leaves the horse and goes and rides another horse until he has finished or she has finished the rest. It is the incarnation in flesh and blood that drags the soul into this life which is called death, where the living are dead. It release at the disease of the body, leaves it free to return upward to the glories of the higher world, the higher earth, where the soul riding on your shoulders always peeps and yearns for. Therefore, the false downward direction assigned to the soul on living earth is a perversion of the true original conception due to the loss of the understanding and the knowledge of the term death in almost all world religions. They've lost that profound it is critical for us to say uh, that all ancient tombs of religious writing originating with those of our ancestors in ancient Egypt based on the hieroglyphic uh, alphabet the grave what we call the grave has dual meanings it is the grave of Amenta which is our physical body of flesh and blood and also the grave inside Amenta, which is the original tomb or womb in which we came from and also in which we deposit the flesh and blood that the soul used. So you see, the word womb, English word womb, for the body in which the soul was awaiting the body to be released by the manufacturer of the car of the horse to use is the same as tomb in which we will put that car that body that carcass we call it carcass carcass when the soul leaves it so what shall we mourn what shall we be in pain for shall we mourn for the carcass or we mourn for the goodness and the sweetness of the soul that has left us. That has left us in this dreary and this mad and dark and hellish place called Lamenta. Yes, when we mourn, we should mourn for the latter. Looted millions and billions of people. Is there, am I saying there is no judgment? No judgment is there. You will be judged for your sins. You will be judged on this earth. You will come back to live again until you relinquish your sins. You will recycle again and come back. Look at nature. Look at what nature does. It is inconceivable and inadmissible that the soul upon release from the body may need a period of time to throw off some heavier portions of its cleansing, earthly myers before it can return to the highest places of purity. This is impossible. This is not correct. So the general commitment of uh, our discussion here today is that uh, the universal accepted idea has little foundation that the soul it will die and the soul will go and experience and be purged and be clean. In fact, what is the truth is that we must reap as we sow, not we will reap after we have sown. We reap as we sow. He that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Half the world has been hypnotized with the belief that mankind can atone in an ethereal world for the deeds done in the body. Perfect justice would obviously require that we return to the same world in which 
acts were committed to square the karmic accounts that caused the commission of those acts. For instance, if we break the dishes in the kitchen, if we have an accident by, with our car and we destroy it, we can hardly atone for that by singing in our bedroom. We can have uh, uh, maybe sentimental satisfaction, uh, calmness, but what we need is to perform actions and the rituals for those that have left the horse so that they cannot come back to ride that horse again or to try to ride that horse again. Hence, in the mummification, our ancient ancestors would rip the body apart and they remove the essential components so that when that soul tries to come back and revive that in terms because of ignorance, they will find it empty of the heart, empty of the brain, with no limbs, but only in four jars. Teachings of our ancient ancestors tells us that modern ignorance has culminated in people not knowing why are they on earth and the purpose why they are on earth because people think that they are the flesh and that they have no soul. Quite clear that uh, if there was no sufficient primary necessity for our coming to wrestle with the flesh and uh, sense in the first instance, then it must be essential that we continue to come until these forces and natures are overcome by us, by our soul, and raised up. The wisdom of our ancient uh, ancestors in Egypt back in that time made this pronouncement and it is back of no other all the other religions, the static uh, angelic immortality of Christians, the eternal spiritual progress in heaven of the Christian scientists and spiritualists and other cults find their rebuke and their correction in the venerable knowledge of our ancient ancestors. Thank you very much and uh, we wish you look at this and uh, remember you are not the body of flesh and blood. Neither are you only the soul when you are sojourning in a mentor on earth in hell. You are the total of the two. Thank you and goodbye.